Welcome back! Day five of the challenge! You made it all the way through. Congratulations for making it to day five. Um, I'm excited about today. Today we get to do relaxation. You've worked really hard all week. You deserve it. And this is how we end all of our yoga classes in a pose that's called Shavasana. So it is that ultimate relaxation and it is an opportunity. Well, there's actually a lot of pieces to it. I won't go through it all here. Um, but basically it's allowing your body to incorporate all the changes you've made. You've done some back bends, some forward folds, some standing poses, a few twists. It allows the body to sort of exhale and incorporate that so that when you get up, you don't just create all that tension that you re just released again, the body, which we tend to do. So there's more to Shavasana though, than just merely lying down, which is why I wanted to give a whole day of the challenge to this. So we are going to do this. So I want to show you some of the variations and some of the things you can do. And then I'm going to take you through a few minutes so that you can enjoy it right here. And now are you ready? Okay. So Shavasana, um, it is lying down and the way you place your body, I'm going to show you a uh, traditional Shavasana if you will. And then I'm going to show you some of the variations you can do based on your own body and what it needs. Okay. So, you come down to the floor and I always like to hold behind my knees to round down to help my body get down to the floor safely. And then the arms come out to the side about 45 degrees from the body. If the arms are right next to the body, there's tension in the shoulders. They can't fully relax. If they go out too far, so if they're out all the way out to the side, they get cold because they're too far away from the body and they start to fall asleep a little bit. Okay. So you want them at about 45 degrees and walk your shoulders down your back. So you're kind of opening up through the arms and the palms will face up. The legs, you extend the legs and you have the feet a little bit more than hip width apart allow the toes to fall out to the side and that allows um, your hips joints to relax a little bit okay and then you just lie here and you get really quiet now lying flat is often hard on people okay so they could first affect your neck if your head is tipped back because of tension in the shoulders you can grab a blanket and place it up underneath your head. Now, the most common problem I see people do when they do this is they lift the head too far. This is actually too much for me and it's throwing off my neck alignment a little bit. So people often want to replicate, want to replicate their pillow. This is not a pillow, okay? You're going to find that the more you do Shavasana, the more lying flat is going to feel, the, the more let me start that again. The better lying flat is going to feel and you want to be as flat as you can get. Plus it is better for the nervous system. So you can see if you can see the difference here, it's just a little bit. Now you might be someone who could benefit on a little higher. If you're not sure, get into it and then have someone take a picture of you so you can see it. Okay. Now the next place that causes problem is the lower back and lying flat can be hard on lower backs. And often people will feel they feel fine and then, initially and then the back begins to get tight as they lie in Shavasana longer and longer. And if that is true for you, you definitely want to have a pad underneath your knees. I also have people who say, just let me lay here for a few minutes and it will release. And if that's true for you too, pad your knees. It's like, I know it will eventually and that's great, but I want you comfortable from the first minute. So if that's true for you, what you want to do is grab a blanket, so it's about this size, it's about three feet or so, mm -hmm. about three feet. And you're going to accordion fold it. And the reason for that is I want it actually flat. So it's, it's really more flat than round. And you're going to put it underneath the thighs. And the reason for that is you're doing it under the thighs, not a round bolster underneath the knees because there you have the um, arteries run down the back of the knees 
And if you put a blanket underneath there, you can cut off the circulation in the legs so that the feet fall asleep. Not dangerous, but very hard to relax. So then you can come down and you can see it's more underneath my thighs than my knees. Arms by your side. This is the way I do Shavasana. So I better keep going or I'm going to start relaxing. Now, there's one other level you can go. You can actually add one more blanket if you need it. Or if you need even more support, I recommend a chair, okay? I do my very, very best to get people uber comfortable in Shavasana. I want them to really, really relax. We, if, if, if you did no other pose in Shavasana, your life would be totally different. Okay, it's the most important pose in yoga. So I want to make sure people are really, really comfortable. So this is another way you can do it. If the back just can't release, bring the legs up. This feels really good. Sometimes I just do this with my students. I feel like it's a nice change up from what we usually do and it's just a really nice relaxation for the back. So this is another option. All right? Okay. So let me move the chair out of the way. So what I want you to do is go ahead and lie back into your Shavasana. Find your position. Remember, you're going to round back. Have your blanket handy if you're going to put something underneath your thighs. Lie back. Going to bring your arms out by your side. Remember, about 45 degrees. Walk your shoulder blades down your back. Extend your legs. I have this lovely patch of sun coming in. This is so nice. Right on my face. I feel like a kitty cat. I found the circle of sun for myself to lie in. I'm just going to take a few deep breaths. Start with three conscious breaths always. And you're visualizing breathing in relaxation. Exhaling tension. Letting your body sink. Another deep breath. Exhaling, sinking. One more deep breath. Exhale, let go. Now take a moment, check in with the body. Make sure it is truly symmetrical. Make sure it's warm. If your hands and feet are cold, you won't be able to relax. It's actually physically impossible. Now allow the soles of your feet to relax. And allow that softness to move up your legs, letting your legs release and relax. Letting your hips soften. Releasing your lower back. Softening your belly. Releasing your shoulders, letting the tension slip away down into the floor. Release your shoulders down into your hands, softening your fingertips, softening the palms of your hands. It's 
softening your neck and your jaw and your tongue. Softening your face. Let everything go. I'll give you a moment to enjoy your relaxation. Now begin to bring your awareness back, deepening your breath, gently moving at your fingers and your toes. We're going to come out of Shavasana very mindfully. We want to come out in a way that disturbs the body the least amount possible. So you can stay relaxed. Bend the knees, roll over to one side, and you're going to make a pillow with your bottom arm. And just rest. As you're ready, you're going to push yourself up with your top hand. Now watch yourself. Top leg needs to stay relaxed. You're going to let your head release. It's very hard to keep that top leg relaxed, but do, do your best. Head stays down, eyes are closed. Come up to sitting, and I want you to grab your blanket and have a seat on it to make your seated pose more comfortable. And keeping your eyes closed, take a few breaths. <laughs> Find that alignment over your sit bones, making yourself comfortable. Now bring your palms together in front of your heart, the Anjali Mudra. Inhaling, bring your arms out to the side, up and overhead, palms come together over your head. Bring your hands down, rest your thumbs at your forehead and set an intention for compassionate thoughts. So literally say to yourself, I intend to have compassionate thoughts. Bring your hands down to rest at your mouth. Set an intention for compassionate words. Bring your hands down to your heart. And as you bow your head to your heart, set an intention to be compassionate with yourself. Namaste. Thank you for joining me. I have so enjoyed sharing all of these yoga gems with you. So I hope you join me out on my, on my um, website, lauraerdmanlentz.com, or join me for class at powhow.com. I do do live classes periodically. You can get on my mailing list there, and um, I send out announcements when I'm doing a live class, and you can also get on my mailing list to make sure that you hear about things coming forward. If you are really excited about learning more yoga in the manner that I teach it, in a very slow um, consciousness to detail way, check out my complete beginner yoga series. You can find it on my website, lauraerdmanlentz.com. I can't wait to help you take your next step in yoga. Thanks for joining me. 
Namaste. 